Let's go! Dorate Jones, hired by LSU. This is freaking incredible because it's actually official. Obviously, let me know what you think in the comments section below. I'm just happy that it's finally signed, sealed, and delivered. But there was something very interesting that Ed Orgeron shared earlier today that if I'm the only person that's going to bring this up, then so be it. But it is something that we would probably never do in our personal lives. Durante, this is huge for LSU because obviously this wasn't their first or their second or potentially not even their third option. But this is where we are now. And look. I'm going to be critical of some aspects. I'm also going to be supportive. So if you don't like honest LSU analysis, you can, you know, there's plenty of channels out there. So here's Durante Jones, the official release from Michael Bonnet. LSU has reached back into the NFL. And this is obviously the quote from Ed Orgeron. And Durante spent a year working with Dave Aranda at Wisconsin. Okay. And uh, he's had multiple stops in the NFL, which is obviously obviously going to relate to a lot of the LSU players. Here's a brief statement from Durante Jones thanking Coach Orgeron, Scott Woodward, and everyone at LSU. And here's a bunch of stats right here showing Durante Jones' pedigree with Harrison Smith and a few other defensive backs with the Miami Dolphins and the Bengals. And obviously... You could take a look at Durante Jones's resume for yourself. Lenore Ryan, Nickel State, some stops at Louisiana high schools. So, yeah, I keep hearing that Durante Jones is a young coach, which he is compared to other coaches, but he's also been coaching for over two decades now. So, yeah, I like a guy that has made a lot of different stops, who has grinded his way to the top, a guy that has coached for the Dolphins, the Bengals, and the Vikings. And I know uh, there's a lot of you out there that say, well, he didn't stay at any one place too long. Well, that's actually pretty normal for non-coordinators that you jump around because your goal for a lot of position coaches is to one day be a coordinator. So you're going to jump around a lot of different places until you get that opportunity And this is actually pretty normal. Nothing out of the ordinary. If you're a coordinator and you're jumping around a lot, that obviously means, number one, you're getting rehired for better jobs, or number two, you're really not good at being a coordinator. So that's obviously a big thing about this hire, the unknown. And LSU is going to get a lot of criticism for hiring someone that has no coordinator experience. And that's true. Going into next year, it is scary that LSU has no actual Division I play-calling experience, including at Orgeron. So we'll get to that in just a moment. And I want to ask you a question, okay? If you were making a big decision in your life, would you go to someone to help you make that decision And that person be someone you publicly scalded for millions of people to hear, right? Wouldn't you think that that person hates your guts? Well, that is exactly what happened with this search. Here's Brody Miller, The Athletic. Ed Orgeron says Durante Jones was recommended to him by Dave Aranda. Interesting. He called Aranda to pick his brain, and they went down a list of guys together. Oh, man. So, this is why in this industry, this coaching industry, it is better to not scald other people, right? So, last year, and I'm telling you, this quote really did some damage, okay? Not only is that a slap of the face to Dave Aranda, that is a slap of the face to Patrick Queen, Christian Fulton, and all those guys that were on that 2019 LSU championship defense. And that wasn't a good quote, right? It made Aranda look really bad. And obviously it came back to bite LSU in the butt because they were historically, historically, historically bad. So I know some of you, and I'm shouting out Carvis, I'm shouting out Marcus, uh, people that 
push back on me when I say Dave Aranda was really good at LSU. Well, he was. He simply was. I mean, LSU's defense in 2019 on a per-play efficiency basis was just as good as the 2018 defense. They just played more plays. But that's not the discussion here. The discussion here is Ed Orgeron going back to a guy that was on the 2019 team. This is the same thing he did for the offensive coordinator hire. He went to Joe Brady, and he's trying to recreate the magic of the 2019 team, which is fine. He's retracing his steps. That's something that I don't mind, right? The problem with this, though, is that, well, he didn't scald Joe Brady. He, he did the exact opposite. He obviously praised Joe Brady and went to Carolina. Well, he scalded Dave Veranda. Do you think Dave Aranda was gung-ho to get on the call with Ed Orgeron to give him assistant coaches uh, that would be good defensive coordinators, right? And also, when Dave Aranda was assembling his defense, if he was so high on Durante Jones, don't you think Dave Aranda would have offered Durante Jones a defensive coordinator position last year? Well, that didn't happen. He hired... I believe the UL defensive coordinator, or I think he did that for this year. I don't know. Baylor's a mess right now. But anyway, still, I would be very skeptical to call someone that may not like you as much as he used to like you. And also, Dave Aranda is a competitor to Ed Orgeron. No, they are not in the same conference, but Dave Aranda has poached a lot of LSU's talented coaching staff. Uh, uh, George Munoz, who's now back with LSU. Meatball Johnson, his defensive line coach, who was beloved by everyone at LSU. He just got Vic Valoria, the assistant strength and conditioning coach. So it's just one of those things where yesterday when I was doing my Durante Jones video, I had thought that Durante's name would have been brought up by Mickey Joseph, who, along with his brother Vance Joseph, is a mentor to Durante Jones, according to Ben Gosling at the Minnesota Star Tribune. And I found that to be fascinating when I was doing research on Jones, and I thought that's where the connection would be. But no, this was a Dave Veranda name that was brought up, because obviously Jones spent a year with Dave Veranda in 2015. And by the way, that was just one season. So, this isn't me knocking Durante Jones, as you saw yesterday in the video, that I am actually high on Durante Jones. I think he is a very talented coach. The problem here is the steps to getting to Durante Jones' name. Maybe it was brought up by Mickey Joseph or someone else before Dave Veranda, but this is pretty direct here, this quote, saying that Aranda recommended Jones. So obviously what I love about Durante Jones is that he's will, blah, 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 really well respected. And I know I just said all of that about Dave Aranda. I, I was more so pointing out the relationship between he and Ed Orgeron and how crazy it is that someone you just scalded months ago would be giving you advice. But anyway, I digress. Dave Aranda obviously thinks a lot of Durante Jones, as does Mike Zimmer of the Minnesota Vikings, as do quite a few names in the coaching industry. So some of you love them, some of you don't. It's obviously very scary bringing someone in that doesn't have much coordinator experience. Let's start with him personally. I was looking at his Instagram account. He is a bourbon guy, which for a lot of you, that is huge. Uh, and he's also a world traveler. I, I saw that he was able to attend an El Clasico, Real Madrid versus Barcelona. Now, if you're not a soccer fan, that um, that doesn't mean anything to you, but he got to catch that classic matchup in Miami. In other words, that is the biggest sports rivalry on the planet Earth. Bigger than Alabama and what's that other team's name? Oh, yeah, Auburn. So, uh, yeah, I, I I really enjoyed stalking his Instagram account because we don't know a whole lot about him personally. But as I mentioned yesterday, I, I went through and, and watched all his old interviews, all his 
old behind the scenes stuff exactly what I did with Ryan Nielsen and that's the funny thing there are so many similarities with Jones and Nielsen that it's wild now obviously I don't know either of them personally we've never seen what or or heard what they say as far as their defensive coaching philosophies actually are but they're both position coaches that are well connected and loved in the coaching industry. So that to me is is something that's really fascinating regarding both of them. Now, I hope one thing we learned during the interview process that Ed Orgeron actually had Durante Jones get in front of the coaching staff, he and Corey Raymond, and draw up defensive plays and draw up how he would go about a defensive game plan. They did the same thing with Marcus Freeman. So the details of the interview are also important when it comes to this because it would be hard for me to believe that they did this with Ryan Nielsen because the timing of it didn't make a whole lot of sense. I really hope LSU did their research and their interviewing when it comes to hiring a coordinator with no experience. Now, look, like I said, I am fine with a coordinator with no experience, but I would have liked to, I would like to know if LSU actually did their due diligence or did what I think most coaching search firms should do when it comes to hiring a defensive coordinator. So, uh, th- that is pretty interesting to me. Now, regarding the Minnesota pass defense, I've gotten so many messages regarding the Minnesota pass defense. Well, it's not really good. It, it was not good at all. And we obviously, I don't want to rehash this because so many of you watched yesterday's video, but we went through and showed the graphs from Sharp Football Stats that everywhere on the field, practically, Minnesota gave up a lot of passing yards, which is not good. Uh, But some of that is on Mike Zimmer. Some of that is on the actual defensive coordinator for the Minnesota Vikings. Durante isn't the one calling the shots. And he had a bunch of young players on the secondary that he had to groom. And that, obviously, is also a huge stepping point when you're having to coach rookie DBs while going up against Allen Robinson and Devontae Adams. I've been doing more research on Jones's secondary, and honestly, I, I have to say it's inconclusive to really determine how good his secondaries actually were. Now, I know I've compared him to Ryan Nielsen quite a bit. Nielsen's defensive lines with the Saints have been better than any unit Durante Jones's coach. With that said, Durante Jones has not coached a player to the level of Cam Jordan. Now, I know Xavier Howard, Jesse Bates are uh, good players, Harrison Smith as well. But still, you know, bouncing around from place to place, having such inexperienced corners, and it not being your own defense that you're actually calling, there's only so much you could really draw from that data. So as we mentioned yesterday, yes, yards per attempt, it is not good for Durante Jones. And when you go to sites like Sharp Football Stats, Explosive Pass Rate, all those things, uh, they don't look good for Durante Jones either. And let's be honest, the big problem with the LSU football team in general last year were the amount of explosive plays that they gave up. Even in games where we deemed the LSU defense played better than normal, that includes Arkansas and South Carolina games that LSU won, they were still giving up huge, huge, huge plays down the field. And, you know, that's just not a winning formula. So LSU is hiring someone to fix the problem of explosive plays down the field while that person's track record with that very stat is not good. But then again, the data can't fully be determined because Durante Jones wasn't the actual play caller and the defensive coordinator. So, yes, it doesn't look good 
but there is an asterisk to it. What about assistant coaches? Where is LSU going to go for the linebackers and defensive line coach? Well, let's actually discuss the staff. Blake Baker's name is floated around. He actually has some history as the former Louisiana Tech defensive coordinator. He also played his college ball at Tulane. I would love Blake Baker to come be the linebackers coach. Knowing that he knows Louisiana, knowing that he's been a defensive coordinator, which would help out Durante Jones as he transitions to this new role in his life, I I would like it. I think the fit would work out pretty well. Uh, Blake Baker's name, ironically, was rumored for the defensive coordinator job last year. Now, Miami's statistics on defense looks good, as you see in this graphic. The problem is that Miami's defense versus ranked teams versus unranked teams are legit Jekyll and Hyde. They were superb against mediocre teams and really, really, really bad when they actually played against real competition. Now, how much of the defense was Blake Baker's? How much of the defense was Manny Diaz's? There was report that Diaz started stepping into Blaker's play calling. You know, no matter what the case was, Blake Baker's defenses weren't all that sublime when they played against the better players. So, still, that doesn't take away his talent as a coach, and he would be a good fit as a linebacker's coach. As would T. Will out of Auburn. God, I love this guy. Every year, Auburn's linebackers are a pain to deal with. You guys know it. I know it. They're playmakers each and every year. And this guy is an ace recruiter. And he is a former Auburn player. But Brian Harson decided to not keep him on staff. So, obviously, this guy is hungry to recruit against his old school that decided to not keep him around. This is couldn't be any more of a motivated guy to get back into the SEC West. This makes a lot of sense. I would be disappointed if the linebackers coach isn't one of those two guys. I think they would both fit in well with all their experience, T. Will in the SEC, Blake Baker as a defensive coordinator. I love both of them, and I hope Ed Orgeron is able to get the job done because, look, LSU's linebackers were awful last year when it comes to assignments and and not filling the holes in the running game. They had their moments, Jabril Cox, Clark, and Baskerville, but this is a unit that desperately needs to improve, and I think those are two slam dunk linebacker hires. And once again, for the defensive line coach, it'll save you money. It's very convenient. Christian Lacatour makes a lot of sense. Look, Ed Orgeron is legit a ace defensive line coach. It's something that he still does to this day. So you don't need to go out and hire some expert when you got the head coach right there that knows what he's doing. And Christian Lacatour was taught the defensive line position by Ed Orgeron. Ed Orgeron also hired Christian Lacatour uh, to obviously be an analyst with the staff. He's a great recruiter. The Ryan Nielsen thing didn't happen. So this is in a way a very similar thing where Ed Orgeron gets to promote one of his own. It just makes a lot of sense on so many different levels, and I hope this actually happens. So my dream defensive side of the football would be Durante at the safeties coach, Corey Raymond at the corners coach, uh, Baker or T. Will at linebackers, and then uh, like a tour on the defensive line. Now, this is fascinating. What happens now with Corey Raymond? Obviously, I think he's going to stick around, stay in the same role as a recruiting coordinator and the cornerbacks coach. So many of you wanted him to be the defensive coordinator. We simply do not know if Corey Raymond wants to actually be a defensive coordinator. Uh, Until someone directly asked him and get him on the record regarding that, we simply just do not know that answer. We don't know the response to what Corey Raymond wants to do with his career. Look, he likes this job. He is LSU through and through. It's his dream job to be coaching for the school that he played for. Um, And, you know, if he wanted to be a defensive coordinator by now, he would have already done it. There's plenty of schools that would write him a check to come run the defense 
or potentially be a head coach. He could just be content with what he's doing now. The bigger concern for you should be, well, what what about what about this whole cornerbacks and safeties coach thing? Well, it's one of those things. Like I know there was rumors that LSU wanted to split up the corners and safeties coach because the communication was so bad last year. There was complaints about Bill Bush's actually coaching of the position and then Bo Pelini's own terminology and all of that. I'm a little bit more comfortable here that the safeties coach is also the defensive coordinator. Obviously, Durante is a better uh, defensive backs coach than Bill Bush when it comes to actual technique. I would hope so. So I think this isn't as big of a deal, but hopefully the communication issues get themselves fixed. Boom! So quite a video today. Obviously, uh, a lot to get to. Don't forget our live streams Tuesday nights, and uh, we we'll hope to talk to you soon. Uh, let me know what you think of the comment section. Let's go. It's power. Our LSU. Boom. Spaghetti bake time. Let's go. Ooh, some spaghetti bake. Let's go.